Welcome to Exploring Computing. Today's video is Digital Music, Part 4, Digital Data versus Analog World. This week we've looked at a number of differences between what happens in the computer and what we're used to in real life. So the first difference that we saw was that we're used to using decimal numbers, but the computers use binary numbers. But the second difference is the difference between analog and digital. Now we went over the difference between binary and decimal first. And the concept of binary numbers really does pervade computing. We see this when we're out trying to purchase a phone and we see we've got choices of 64, 128, 256, or 512. We've seen this as we've discussed our digital images where we see that colors come in 24-bit color or 32-bit color and with our sounds where we have 16-bit samples. And so I covered it first because it is necessary to have a better understanding when we're talking about images or sound. But really, this second difference, the difference between digital and analog, is probably far more important of the two. I haven't explicitly talked about the difference between digital and analog, even though that's really what we've been doing these last two lectures, the lecture on images and the lecture on sound. And so in this video, I really want to explicitly talk about analog versus digital. So analog refers to continuous signals. When we're looking at the real world, the real world is filled with continuous quantities. In contrast, what digital means is we're storing information in discrete quantities. And so really what digital images is all about and what digital music or digital sound is all about is taking the real analog world and converting it into these discrete quantities which we can store inside the computer. So there's always this process when we want to move something into the computer, we have to take that real world analog entity and all its glory and somehow convert it to the digital world. You know, if we're looking at a, a picture, so here's a, here's a photograph of the Red Hoop Fountain in front of Green Library. You know, let's say we're actually standing there in front of the library and the world with all its glory is out there. And so we can ask questions like, well, how many colors are there in the real world? How many pixels are there in the real world? These questions don't make sense. The real world does not have a discrete number of colors. It does not have discrete pixels. And so what happens when we take a digital photograph is we're converting it from the real world into these discrete units that can be stored inside of our computer. We're converting the real, the real world into individual pixels and for each of these individual pixels, we're taking a look at the color and we're saying, hey, you know, I need to convert that color into this sequence of eight bits for red, eight bits for green, and eight bits for blue. And so I'm digitizing the real world so that it can start as discrete quantities inside the computer where I can start in these individual bits and bytes. Similarly, when we're looking at our music, when Stanford Symphony Orchestra is playing Beethoven's Fifth Symphony out in front of the classroom, they're not generating a stream of numbers with 44,100 numbers being generated per second and each number being between negative 32,768 and positive 32,767. That's not what they're doing. They're generating a continuous analog signal. And what we need to do when we store that into our computer is we need to convert that continuous analog signal into discrete digital quantities so we can actually store them in the bits and bytes in our computer memory. 